Okay, so what we're going to do is just look at a question here for now. We're going to try and solve this problem. Given this information, you need to find the value of theta, which is here, and the value of x, which is here. So we do this by doing the following. So, one thing to note is there is a right angle triangle right here, and the measure of this line right here is 4.5 centimeters. Now, what else to note is that angle DCE has a value of pi over 12. We're going to need this information in a little bit. All right. And again, it's pi over 12 radians because anything that's measured with pi has implies that it's in radian form. Now, no, uh, let's look at trying to solve for theta. We know using in a right angle triangle, using Sokotoa, we can find the value of theta. Theta is looking at the 4 and with respect to theta, we know that 4 is the opposite. 8 is the hypotenuse because the right angle points to where the hypotenuse is, like here folks. So what, what uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, hopefully you're thinking sine. Sine of the angle theta, which is what we need to find, is equal to 4 over 8. 4 over 8 is equal to 1 uh, sine inverse, sorry, theta is equal to sine inverse of 4 over 8, which is 1 over 2. Sine inverse of 1 over 2, you're going to find out is 30 degrees. But remember we want it in radians. So theta is equal to 30 degrees in radians. You multiply by pi over 180, and that will give us pi over 6 radians. Because remember, to convert degrees to radians, you must multiply by pi over 180. All right, knowing this, we keep moving forward. So we now have the value of this theta right here. We have the value of theta. We know that this is pi over 6. This is pi over 2, so this is going to be pi over 3. Why is that the case? Well, when you think about it, the whole of all of these has to equal pi. So pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus pi over 6 leaves us with pi over 3. So angle BCA is equal to pi minus pi over 2 minus pi over 6 using SATT, we find out, even if we convert it to degrees, that the answer to this is going to be pi over 3. And that's the value of BCA as well as DCF. The reason behind that is you have that the opposite angles in two intersecting lines are always going to be equal. Knowing this, what we can do is now use this opposite angle to help us with the remaining. We know this whole thing is going to be pi over 3. We also know that this little piece right inside here, DCE, this little piece here, is equal to pi over 12. So I can find the remaining angle right here, ECF, by taking pi over 3 and subtracting pi over 12, which yields us pi over 4. So this angle right here is going to be pi over 4. Knowing that, this is a right angle triangle, that means that this must be also pi over 4. Now, we have a right angle triangle. We have this measurement, which is the adjacent side. We also need this measurement, which is the hypotenuse. Using the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we use cosine. So cosine of this angle, pi over 4, is equal to 4.5 over x. And what I can do is solve for x by cross multiplying and we'll end up with x is equal to 9 root 2 over 2. That's the exact answer folks. And if you're asked to round it, you will give me the answer to four decimal places in the question and in the therefore statement you round your answer to a lower value. Alright, let's go to another question. So, we have uh, in the 
previous question, we had cosine of pi over 4 is equal to 4.5 over x. So let's look at what this says. Cosine of pi over 4 equals 4.5 over x. Cosine of pi over 4, let's say you didn't have a calculator, or you weren't allowed a calculator in, uh, in a course, let's say in university. How would you solve a question like this? Well, folks, you need to look at cosine of pi over 4 and note the special angle triangle. The special triangle, pi over 4 is one of those special angles. Pi over 4 has the values 1, 1, root 2 because it's an isosceles triangle. So cosine of pi over 4 is equal to 1 over root 2. And that's equal to 4.5 over x. So what you would do now is cross multiply and you will get the value of 4.5 times root 2, which is 9 root 2 over 2. Okay, let's go to the lesson now. In 6.2, radian measure and angles on the Cartesian plane are as follows. So these are the special angles that we learned in grade 11. 1, 1, root 2, and the 30, 60, 90 triangle, 1, 2, root 3. Now, what's important to note is even though I call this the 1, 2, root 3, 2 is always going to be your hypotenuse because that's the largest root or largest value of all three of these. The right angle in the hypotenuse points to the hypotenuse. So the right angle in the right triangle points to the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the largest angle because it is opposite the largest side. Knowing this, we need to convert this to radian measure. So 45 degrees is going to change itself to pi over 4 because remember pi is 180 degrees. Divided by 4 gives us 45 degrees. So this is pi over 4 and pi over 4. In the second part, this 30 degrees turns out to be pi over 6. 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees. So pi over 6 is also equivalent to 30 degrees. The other one is going to be pi over 3. That, oh, sorry folks, that represents 60 degrees. All right, now, quadrants, very important to note. If I place all of these triangles in the first quadrant, all the values will be positive. But then when I place it in the second quadrant, this value will be the same as this value over here, but note that the, this line here will end up being negative. Put it into the next quadrant, and this would be in a different one. So we're going to look at examples that involve, for example, 7 pi over 6. What is 7 pi over 6 and where would we measure it? Pi is this much, folks. It goes out to this line. To get an extra pi over 6, we'd have to move encroach into the next area, and that's our extra pi over 6. What results, and when we have pi over 6 here in this area, is that we will have negative 1 for the x, negative root 3 for the, sorry, negative 1 for the y, negative root 3 for the x, and 2 for the r value. Keep in mind, this is the radius, so this value is always going to be positive. So, now, when we measure, and measure in standard position, that is measuring in a counterclockwise way. If you're measuring negative angles, you measure in a clockwise way. Whenever I ask for standard position, you start with the positive x-axis and you move to the coordinate where you need to go. So, let's represent sine, cos, and tan in such a way that will make more sense to you. For example, sine of an angle, it doesn't matter where that angle is and which quadrant, it will always equal y over r. Cosine of theta will always equal x over r. And tangent of theta was always equal to y over x. Again, using SOHCAHTOA, you can figure out these values quite quickly. Keep in mind, though, 
These are only the three primary trigonometric ratios. There are three more. But before we move on with the three more, note this. Cast rule. You should remember it from last year. Cast rule says that this quadrant is the best one of all. All the quadrants have the same value. In this quadrant, all the trig functions have a negative value with the exception of sine. In this, fun in this quadrant, trig sorry, tan ratio is the only one that has a positive value. The rest are negative. And finally here, cosine here is negative, the rest, sorry, cosine here is positive, and the rest are negative in this quadrant. So, we have to remember the reciprocal trig ratios. We only have the primary ones listed, so we need the reciprocals. The reciprocals are cosecant theta, which is equal to r over y, the secant theta, which is equal to r over x, and finally, cotangent theta is equal to x over y. Keep in mind that these do not same, start with the same letter as these, so therefore you shouldn't get them too mixed up. Alright, next part. Example number one. You're asked to determine the value of cosine of 11 pi over 6 and cosecant 5 pi over 4. Let's work with cosecant 5 pi over 4 first. Where is this located? Well, if you remember correctly, to go all the way around to here, that will be pi. You add another quarter, so a quarter pi to get there, and that will land us in this quadrant. What quadrant is that? That is the C. A S T. So the tan uh, quadrant. So 5 pi over 4 is going to be from standard position from here across to here, but we just need this angle right here. How much will this small angle be? Hopefully you're thinking pi over 4, because you're right. Knowing that it's pi over 4, we can now draw our special triangle because pi over 4 is a special angle. Pi over 4 going across is going to be negative 1. Adjacent is also going to be negative 1. And finally, the hypotenuse is going to be root 2. All right. And the second part, 11 pi over 6, so cosecant of 5 pi over 4 is equal to cosecant is the flip of sine, Sine is h is o over h, so we're going to do hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse is root 2, opposite is negative 1, and the values reduced is going to be negative root 2. And then we look at cosine 11 pi over 6, we calculate the value, and you get the values that cosine 11 pi over 6 is equal to root 3 over 2. So these are two examples that are important. To answer. Okay, we'll go on to the next video for part two.